Okay, in this training module, you'll be learning how to perform a hill start and practice the switch from throttle to braking as you crest a gradient and go from ascending to descending. You'll be using GE ES44 C4 locomotives hauling heavy intermodal freight. Now you'll go through the steps needed to take over this locomotive. getting moving, it's worth remembering the following sequence that was covered in the locomotive training modules. Independent on, auto off. Throttle on, independent off. Let's go through that slowly and understand why. If you apply power too quickly, the wheels will slip. If this happens, reduce the amount of power to regain control and then gently reapply. If you are struggling for grip, apply sand to increase traction. That's it. You're moving forwards under power. If you use the same start process every time you begin moving, it'll become second nature. Congratulations, you have reached the summit. As you start your descent, you'll need to switch to dynamic brakes to control your speed. 
the most effective speed for dynamic brakes is around 30 miles per hour. So if you're exceeding that speed, you should be slowing down. Above 30 miles per hour, the dynamic brakes become a lot less effective, and you will be more reliant on the automatic brake. The automatic brake on its own will not provide enough fine control over the speed of the train. It's a blunt instrument, because you can't partially release the brakes, and they take a few minutes to apply to the setting you've asked for. If you try to rely on just the automatic brake, you will often find yourself coming to a halt, or going over speed while you wait anxiously for the brakes to apply. Watch the train speed as it crests the top of the gradient. You'll go from needing power to maintain speed to finding that power starting to accelerate the train. When you see that, start backing off power and aim to keep your speed below 30 miles per hour. Once your throttle is at zero, and you're starting to pick up speed a little, it's time to get the dynamic brakes into their setup position. They'll need to be there for 10 seconds before you can use them further. They start adding dynamic brake as needed to keep the speed in check. The dynamic brake is only on the locomotive, and will react nearly instantly. As you begin to get to larger amounts of dynamic brake needing to be applied, <laughs> it's time to bring in the automatic brake to help. In most cases, a minimum set of automatic brake is enough. Apply that now. Uh -huh. Watch out that on some locomotives, as you apply the automatic brake, uh, this will cut the dynamic brake out entirely. Uh, this is because of the brakes applying on your locomotive. If you notice this happening, pull the independent brake towards you into the bail off position, and it will release those brakes only, leaving the automatic brake on the rest of the train. Uh, and you will see the dynamic brake come back into action immediately. As the automatic brake begins to take effect down the length of the train, you'll notice the train begin to slow down due to the extra braking effort. But gently dial back the amount of dynamic brake to compensate for this, and continue to try and aim to keep your speed around, but not exceeding, 30 miles per hour. If you find that full dynamic brake is unable to hold the train speed, Add a little air with the automatic brake. Wait to see how the train reacts, and adjust with the dynamics as needed. Always work under your target speed of 30 miles per hour. If you find yourself chasing faster speeds, you'll need to take more substantial corrective action with the automatic brake. Okay, come to a stop up ahead using the automatic brake.
Right. Well, that concludes this training module. It is highly recommended that you practice both hill starting and the change from ascent to descent until you are comfortable with them. They are one of the more challenging aspects of operating heavy freight, and you'll really feel like you're in more control of this train as you get the hang of this task.